Hey, welcome back to Everyday Talks 24-7. It's Thursday, August 29th. So great to have you uh, along tonight. I'm back in my office. I finally got to rearrange my office a bit today, so uh, that's what the change looks like. We're looking at Psalm 63. And I've looked at it before. I have a separate playlist on it. But Psalm 63, what is so valuable here is that it actually can shape, form, change, direct our emotions. See, our emotions are the first responders of our heart. They go out to protect us. If our heart's in a good place, our emotions will take care of us. If our heart's not in so good place, the notions of emotions will work against us. And essentially, emotions reflect the belief of your heart. Emotions reflect the belief of your heart. Just as what comes out of the mouth comes from the heart, well, what comes out of your emotions reflect what your heart believes. And that's what these Psalms teach us about this. So last night we looked, and we'll see how it plays out. Last night we looked and we saw how David was in the wilderness, and you and I are in the wilderness, and just kind of lost at times. But then he focuses on God, you know, he's hungering and thirsting, longing for God, because his soul is dry. And then in verse 2, he focuses on God, I've seen you in your sanctuary and gazed upon your power and glory. So that sets us up for verses 3 through 5 tonight, that's what we're going to look at. Let me read them, verses 3 through 5 of Psalm 63. Your unfailing love is better than life itself. How I praise you. I will praise you as long as I live, lifting up my hands to you in prayer. You satisfy me more than the richest feast. I will praise you with songs of joy. There are three things here in these three, three lines. The first is, our emotions are shaped by what we believe. So what is David believing here? Your unfailing love is better than life itself. How I praise you. Your unfailing love is better than life itself. You see, that's not something we come at naturally. Because remember, we're born in enmity with God. We're not trusting Him as we should. But when the Spirit of God gets a hold of us, we see the beauty of Christ, then I start to rethink. And I realize this has said, this unfailing love, this love that never stops, that love is going to be committed to me no matter what I do. I realize that's better than life itself. That's a belief that we have to come to. The Word of God tells us this. The Spirit of God wrote this for us. So our earnest prayer, Lord, help me believe what's true here. Your love is better than life itself. And I praise you for that. And praise is simply telling back to God the good things he's done and the wonders of his character. So the first step in getting those emotions in where they need to be and not working against us but working for us is that we must believe that your unfailing love is better than life itself. Stop chasing after everything else. This brings everything else into sharp perspective. This helps us enjoy life. This is a beautiful passage. So the first step in reshaping, retraining these emotions is believing that the unfailing love, love of God is better than life itself. The second thing we see in verse 4 we then begin to praise God for that. Remember, praise is not just saying praise in church or in a, in a song. Praise is, like I said a minute ago, praise is retelling the things of God about his character and his actions. We see that in Psalm 73, Psalm 78, over and over. A command to praise is not a command to say the word praise. It's a command to Think about God and be blown away by his character. Think about God and the way that his actions have saved us. 
have protected us, have washed over us and kept us, even if we're in hard times. If I am believing and then praising what I believe, the first two steps, then the third thing will be, you will be satisfied. Verse 5, you satisfy me more than the richest feast. I will praise you with songs of joy. What he's saying here is that there's satisfaction in God that is more than what this world has to offer. See, at this time, 3,000 years ago when this was written, they didn't have all the distractions we have right now. But the thing that was really exciting to them was a feast, a big party, a big banquet. And they were excited about this. This is the top of the chain. You satisfy me more than the best that the world has to offer. Well, that's still true today. We have all these amazing things that we get excited about, whether it's the big screens or the way we listen to music, the unbelievable stereos that even comes now through us in our AirPods, whether it's beautiful clothing, homes, favorite things you like to do, hiking, whatever it is, listening to music, enjoying people. Those are all fine. But what he's saying here, if I believe, if I believe that the unveiling love is better than life itself, and then I praise God continually for that, so I'm actually changing my mindset through belief and praise, then I will be satisfied because now I know this is better than that. And that impacts my heart, impacts our emotions. And then he ends verse 5. I will praise you with songs of joy. Because I've been liberated from the muck of this world. These three passages, these three lines of poetry, can reshape, reform our emotions to where they become our strongest ally. That's a beautiful thing to pray for. Believe that the unfailing love of God is better than life itself. Praise God for who he is and what he does. And then see the satisfaction that outclasses anything this world has to offer. Again, love your thoughts, your feedback. Beautiful psalm here. We'll continue, Lord willing, tomorrow. Thank you so much for being here and such a blessing. You have a great night. And uh, we'll see you then. Bye-bye.